Jack. Yes, 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 yes. I got a good one for you. Okay. And we're going to explain boiling water. <laughs> okay. I know it sounds completely. Do we, do we plan on scalding someone? <laughs> no, it's needs, just that I'm this just needs saying. an explanation. <laughs> I know, I know. I just thought there's stuff going on that people need to know. They okay. should know. No, they don't, okay. you, no, nobody needs to know what I'm going to tell you. But I think you'll be glad for having learned it. Okay. Okay. Um, will this have anything to do with a watched pot and the fact that the contents will never boil? I, I was such a literal child that when I heard that, I, I tested it. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I watched Pablo never. I watched it and then it boiled. I said, well, that's one that people right. don't understand. <laughs> Once again, these adults lying to me. <laughs> never I trust was, anybody over 30. I was such a literal child. So, anyhow, so watch what happens. Okay. So you have this pot of water. Right. Or pot of anything, but let's just stick with water. Okay. And the water is composed of molecules. And all the molecules are banging against each other. They're not in any kind of structure or lattice. Otherwise, the water would be solid, all right? It would be ice. Unstructured okay. banging molecules. Okay, so now... Sounds like an orgy, <laughs> but go ahead. So in our liquid pot, you have these uh, molecules of water. And you can tell me what the molecular form of water is? Uh, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Say get H2O. H2O. H2O, you got it. Okay. Oh, oh, by the way, I've said this before, but since you gave me the answer in that way, okay, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. I'm just trying to sell smart, Neil. I, I can, no, I was good. That, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> no, because you told it to me that way, right. let me just slip this in, that in the old days when we used to launch the space shuttle, okay, okay. there's this huge orange tank right under its belly, okay, sitting between two solid rocket boosters. Yeah, okay? okay. That orange, the solid rocket boosters is solid fuel. You light them, they go, and you can't throttle them down. They go until they die, and then they part ways, and then the shuttle goes into orbit with the orange tank, uh -huh. and then detaches from that, and the tank burns up in the atmosphere. Okay, that orange tank has liquid fuel in it that you can throttle up or down, okay? Uh -huh. And it has two tanks, one of them twice the size of the other. Okay. The one that's twice as big has liquid hydrogen in it. The one that's half the size is liquid oxygen. And there's a nozzle that combines these two liquids. If you combine two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen, which is exactly how you told me how to get a pot of water, what do you get if I combine two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen? You get water. Well, you get water. And, and it's water. viewing out of the back of the nozzle. So now you got a rocket engine that's, you got fuel now from you've water. Got, you've got fuel because to make water is highly exothermic. Right. Okay, energy is released. And so that orange tank taking the shuttle into orbit does not pollute the air at all, just adds water to it, water wow. vapor. Wow. Okay. Okay, that's, first of all, that's genius. I'm, I'm never, it never ceases to amaze me how smart these NASA people are. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called rocket science. Exactly. All right? <laughs> you ever see this shirt? Uh, you know, uh, there's a rocket going into it. It's not rocket science. Well, actually, it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly it, <laughs> it is. It actually is rocket science. Yeah. So, here we are in the, in the pot of water. Okay. We are not breaking apart the hydrogen and the oxygen, they are bound together for this entire conversation okay. as a water molecule. So, now you turn on the heat. This is a great experiment to get your kids to do. I did it with my kids, okay? So you put on the heat and you get a thermometer and have it read the temperature of the water, mm -hmm. okay? And then you write down that temperature. But the heat is on, okay? So come back in one minute, measure the temperature again, and you write down the temperature. Okay, there's, there's America, so we're Fahrenheiting this. So. The, the water is now 100 degrees, and then it's 110 degrees. Right. You just keep doing this every minute. You By see the, way, the water. The, the F in Fahrenheit stands for freedom. No. <laughs> because this is Merck. 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 
We're going to use complicated Fahrenheit units because we're free. That's right. <laughs> Even though we've actually imprisoned ourselves in the world with, with our own uh, units of measure for yeah. some things. So now right. we're at 110 degrees. 110. You just keep doing this and get the, and you write down what time it is. The, the flame is staying there and you just keep writing down the temperature and you keep doing it. 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. You can write a pl you can plot this on a chart. Okay? If your kid has had that that much math yet. Right. You can plot temperature and time and you watch right. the temperature go up. Mm -hmm. Okay. You keep doing this. And so I had my kids do it. Okay, it's 190 degrees. Okay, I wonder how much, is it boiling yet? No. Okay, I wonder how high we can get the temperature. So they go back, it's 200 degrees. Is it boiling yet? No, I see a few bubbles, but is it boiling? No. Okay, 205, 206, 207, 212. Is it boiling? Yes, it's boiling. You see a lot of that beginning like a 210, 212. Okay, go back a minute later. What's the temperature now? It's still 212. Okay, wait a minute, come back in five minutes. What temperature now? It's still 212. Oh my gosh. What the hell just happened? We were increasing the temperature of, I have flame under this thing. Flame. If you add flame to something, you're supposed to increase the temperature, aren't right. you? And that's what was happening. And then the temperature pegged. It didn't get hotter than 212 degrees. It just stayed there. And you got the data to show it. So what's happening? That's what I want to know. Okay. <laughs> That's why I'm here, Neil. That was my question. What where, is happening? Where does the heat energy go? It's got to go yeah. somewhere. So we didn't, did, we didn't hit a heat ceiling. We just reached an energy threshold. Is that what... No, no, you're putting too many, too many words in the sentence, word salad there. Okay, so, all, all I'm saying is what we observed okay. is we are definitely adding heat. We didn't turn off the heat. No, okay? heat, no the, the heat is still going. And we saw what effect that had on the water. Right, but if we kept adding heat, Neil, this is my question. Why would the temperature not keep going up if you just keep adding heat? Because of a magical thing that goes on in nature called phase change it's called a phase change okay that sounds very star trekky harry potter <laughs> i didn't say phaser change oh okay. <laughs> okay phase change so the water is becoming steam right that takes energy okay in order to turn boiling water at 212 degrees mm-hmm into steam at 212 degrees takes energy. Gotcha. That'll eat all that energy until there's no water left. Uh -huh. Then you have a pot of steam. Well, it'll blow up the pot because steam takes up more yeah, volume than the water. Up, right. But if you had a, if you had a, a vessel. A steam capture. A steam okay. capture, correct. You'll keep heating the water until it all becomes steam. Then the temperature of the steam will go up and you can continue this exercise. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. That means the steam carries more energy than you thought. Well, of course it does. That's how you power everything from locomotives <laughs> to hot air balloons that don't even have any air. It's well, everything from a hundred years ago. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a steampunk movement. That's, <laughs> it's steampunk, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All of my crazy contraptions that look like transformers are powered by steam. Okay, so actually, the the reason why most of those machines work is not because steam is hot. Oh, really? It's just because the volume of steam is so much greater than the water. So they create what a pressure that moves yeah, it's a pressure whatever? thing. It creates okay. pressure, and okay. so because the steam wants to get out, it'll go through it pushes, a nozzle. It pushes. It, it'll push us piston it'll do whatever the, the locomotive thing so so that's why but but it's exploiting the, sort of the thermodynamics of it i have a volume of a substance and then i do something to it to give it much much more volume that takes energy okay yes i had to put in energy to turn that water into steam so that it has the steam pressure of what you then needed to give you for okay, the machine now, at, at the risk of sounding ignorant 
which is no risk for me at all. <laughs> okay. No risk for me at all. Uh, let me ask my risk-free question here. Where does the energy come from in order for that to happen? Is it coming from the flame heat that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's. Yes. Okay. And in power plants, it's coming from coal. And in, in, in hydroelectric plants, it's coming from water pressure going through turbines. So all, so, so all of these ways of making energy is converting energy from one form into another. So, uh, oh, oh, oh. I see. So basically the, whatever this, you know, you want to call it the water or whatever, that change is under that. It's undergoing that change. It's actually taking the energy from the heat and then creating the change. Yes. It's taking that energy and said, says to its molecules, get the hell out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> At high speed. Right. Okay. Get the hell out of here. So one by one, molecules are leaving the surface of the water, going into another state of matter. Wow. The steam state. Fire is a bad landlord. Just, you are all, you're evicted. Get the hell out. <laughs> you're all Only evicted. if you hit a certain temperature. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's evicting it all. It's evicting That's every, correct. Uh, by the way, by the same token, it works the other way. Um, you're a scotch drinker. Let me hear your scotch voice. Every once in a while, I come back here. I would like to play a little song for you right now. It's called I Drank Too Much, right. I drank too much Scotch and She Left okay. Me. Okay. All right, so Chuck, this fact that I just shared with you enables some very interesting things. It's why you can boil water in a paper cup. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I've done this. Okay, so here's what you do. Okay. What, what? I'm, well, well, first, okay. I'm just, so, listen, you're the only person I've ever heard utter these words in my life. So, I mean, clearly okay. <laughs> I have been traveling in the wrong circles. <laughs> now, I'm a grown man. Ain't nobody in my life ever said to me, did you know you can boil water in a paper cup? Really? No one ever yeah. said that? You no didn't know about ever, this? I swear I didn't. Oh my gosh. I, listen, I'm a oh little my embarrassed. Gosh. Okay. I, I, you know, I did not know this. Okay. So you need like forceps, otherwise your hand will get burned. But so, so. Here's what you, you need a flame that's like the size that just is touching the bottom of the paper cup. Okay. Part of the problems with paper cups is they have ridges that go beyond the side of the cup and those will burn. But the cup that's touching the water, tell me the highest temperature that cup paper can ever get. From the water? Well, it, wouldn't it be, if the water's in it, 212 degrees? Yes. Yes, that's the, that's the hottest that's the the hottest paper can get. get. Does paper bur burst into flame at 212 degrees? No. 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 It famously burns at what temperature? Oh, I wouldn't know. 451. Uh, that's Fahrenheit 451. Oh. Aren't you a literate person? I, I didn't know that was the reason why he named the book that way. I thought it was yes! fire. fire. <laughs> that, that's what, what are books made of paper, right? Yeah, In the old true. days. That makes sense. Right. Okay. So, if the water is touching the paper... The hottest the paper can ever get is just the temperature of the water. The temperature of the water. And, and you heat the water and it gets, and then it just starts boiling. Until the water leaves entirely, then it burns. Right. That's why it's very hard to completely incinerate a human body. And proving the saying, we don't need no water. Let the mother effer burn. Burn mother effer. Burn. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I, mean, I wasn't in that circle the day that <laughs> happened. I'm sorry. Can't <laughs> All right. See, this is how I know you're a scientist. No, no, the people. I love it. I love it. There, there's a saying. Uh, it goes, the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. And then the response is, we don't need no water. Let the mother effer burn. Burn, mother effer. Burn. I have never ever heard that i well yeah, now we, we even i've people. never heard of water I'm boiling in a paper cup and you never okay. heard that the roof was <laughs> on fire <laughs> so i might do a TikTok uh, boiling water in a paper cup but anyhow point is point is you've heard about spontaneous combustion this legendary way people dissolve into ash yes you have what is it six quarts or I don't know, what, what is the, how much blood we have in our body? 
Okay? Oh, I have no idea. We have liquid in our... We're, yeah. Whatever, 70, 70, whatever we are, almost seventy percent. We have it's almost seventy percent water between sixty and seventy percent water. Right. You cannot completely burn the body until all that water leaves. Right. That's all. Yeah. It's very simple. You cannot toast bread until the heating elements get rid of all the water on the surface of the bread. That's why most of the time the bread is in the toaster. It it's hasn't. It doesn't toasted. look like it's changed. Right. It's not toasted yet. It's those last couple of that last minute. It says now I can brown your toast. Which is why I burn every damn piece of toast I try to cook. <laughs> <laughs> it's not linear with time. Exactly. And you can't instantly toast it just by showing soft, fresh bread to to, to heating coils. It has to get rid of the water first. Then it can raise the temperature. Otherwise, everything's sticking to 212 degrees. First of all, this was a great explainer. Secondly, now I want a sandwich. <laughs> Toasted. <laughs> of course. I'm not an animal. All right. That's all we got, Chuck. All right. Got to call great. that one quits. Okay. That was the beginning, middle, and end of boiling water. And, of course, for the Euro audience, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. 100 degrees Celsius, but you already knew that. This is Star Talk. Yet another explainer video. Video. Always good to have you there, Chuck. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking. Up.